there are more details and anyone is that's interested could consult this ITU recommendation. Uh, this technique, it's so-called mini trench techniques, uh, and the idea is to install cables in small trenches that are done in underground to use underground to put in a duct and to put the cable inside. Uh, the advantage of these techniques over conventional cable laying uh, is es essentially the speed of execution. This is a faster technique and also the lower cost as there is lower uh, job to be done uh, and also it has some impacts in cost and in environment. The idea is to interrupt the traffic the last time possible e to make it easier to put the cable and clean the area. Uh, of course, this kind of advantage allowed to get the permission to, to put the cable in an easy way. Uh, this technique was intended to be applied on routes that are general asphalted, they're paved road, paved surface, and also in sidewalks. When you in both, it's necessary to have a compact soil to to make uh, this application. Uh, when we have a root with the soil that's not compact, like sandy or that if the soil contents medium sized copes like copes between 10 and 20 centimeters in diameter is not a good idea to use this kind of technique if we have some uh, some utility crossing the, the way we intend to put the cable. Uh, this technology is not appropriate. It's better to use technology that um, investigates the soil. And uh, as we have to keep the dimensions of this mini trench, it's better to find a way nearby, but without uh, other kind of uh, facilities. If you, if you have some other utilities, better not to, to put this mini train nearby. That's a, a schedule, a general drawing of this kind of uh, mini train. We have around 10 centimeters wide and depth 30 centimeters. Uh, as I mentioned, so, once before, the idea is to put the cables in soil. We need to cross this layer of asphalt and to have the ducts and after the cable inside the ducts put in the soil. That's why we need around 30 centimeters. Then we can see here the general view, the first uh, layer of asphalt that what we have in touch, the inner points of this asphalt layer, and we have a compact soil. And the way we apply this the duct is done uh, simultaneously cutting through the pavement and digging the trench with this depth and cross section uh, around this uh, dimension, but can have some adjustment depends on on the project. Then 30, 4 to 40 centimeters and the cross section around 10, but could be 
between 7 and 15. They are the, the values most commonly used. Um, the idea is to keep the depth constant. Then uh, if it's better to keep at least five minutes of five centimeters deeper than the forcing asphalt. And it depends on the kind of the surface we have. And the idea is to repair to guarantee the protection against impact resulting from road repair. Then it's necessary to keep some minimal distance between the asphalt and the ducts just to avoid the normal vibration or some kind of movement transmitted could be that could be transmitted to the cable. And so relatively protect structure. And this dimension is around one third or half of the normal dimension used in trains. But it's enough to keep the duct and the cable in a safe situation. Uh, of course, it's, these values are based on experience of some people and depends on the kind of machinery and the number of ducts of cable the company intends to install. There are some possible configuration. Uh, any kind of crossing through unpaved section could be done if we have a compact subground, then the idea is, is that if you have a kind of stable uh, road and with a compact soil, it's possible also to use this kind of technique. One uh, point to take to be to taken in consideration is that uh, is not uh, recommended uh, do some uh, changes in route with uh, a kind of angle that could be near the bending uh, limits of the duct and also the cable. Then the idea is if it's necessary to change direction, it's very common in cities, then the idea is to put in several segments and to, to have the compliance with this uh, minimum band radius. Uh, the other point important is also the location of underground utilities. The idea is to determine uh, correctly in order to, to establish a correct route for this trench. And to do this is necessary to use a lot of information that could be found in cartographic documentation. Most of the time, it's gathered from the administration that owns the town or by the utility company that has another utility in the same neighborhood. And, through, and also through instrument field survey, the idea is always investigate the soil. Where other means of determ determination of the location of underground utilities are not available, uh, the, uh, the idea is to have a deeper uh, trench. It could be reach one meter. There, there are two, two ways to apply this in this kind of mini trench. The first one is uh, do simultaneously excavation of uh, the trench and also to put the duct in the cable laying to apply just one operation. In this case, the reels could be mounted on board of the cutting machine so the, the duct could be fed in the trench using 
uh, a guide that take care of the bending rates and, and just after the soil is removed. Another way is do in two steps, you know, simultaneous excavation and duct or cable lay. In this case, first we do the trench and in another step, the duct or cable are installed. Uh, one another important point is if this infrastructure is necessary to be installed near trees. The idea is to protect, to avoid that the some kind of roots could reach the duct and affect the cable. Uh, it's usual to have trees that uh, have some strong root it, and, and also the cable could be moved because of the these trees affect the, the duct. Then an easy way to to avoid this is to put U-shaped galvanized steel raceway and equip it with covers and put in in the same kind of concrete that we usually backfill the the trench. Then this uh, could this could avoid that the trees affect the duct and reach the cable and also the fiber. Uh, in this kind of uh, technique, the resurface should be delayed at least 24 hours uh, from the time the mini trench was backfilled. Then we, we need to have another step to uh, do this resurfacing. Then we have, in the first case, we have this step, and after 24 hours, this one. And the second case, we have two steps in this third one. And they are, are faster, but uh, could be, uh, could take some time. This is a general view uh, of another technology. To avoid this kind of delay, it was de developed, uh, improved uh, technique that, we, that was called enhanced mini trench. Uh, when the, the trench was reduced to five centimeters wide and same 30 centimeters deep, and the process was improved. Uh, in this kind of trench, it's possible to, to put one or two ducts as we have uh, just five centimeter trench, it's usual to put the second duct uh, upon the first one. The other principles are the same, to have the, to dig the mini trench, and after that to put the cable uh, inside, the duct with the cable inside, or only the duct. And the main advance was the way it's done. The idea is simultaneous, simultaneous use of trench saw and suction pump. Then uh, you can see at the figure, you have here the, the machine and th this uh, remotion of all the removed soil. And after that, it's applied the duct and the cable and Simultaneously, we have another vehicle with backfilling uh, compound. Then the mini trench is open and filled in the same operation. It makes it possible to use this kind of apparatus in urban or non-urban environment, and the same activity, the, all the activities is, are split in three phases. The first one is the phase of 
to dig the trench, trench and dig phase. The second phase is the removal, the suction of the material debris. And the third phase is the backfilling phase just after the cable or duct are laid. Um, of course, uh, it's a, a, a very fast uh, operation and took more time to prepare all the data and choose the route and after that it's easier. Any question or any doubts about this? This technique? Yes, Mr. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, I would like just to, to ask, why are you saying um, cables near trees shall be protected? Why? What is the consequences of the fact that uh, being near the trees, I mean, what is the consequences? Yeah. Thank you. The idea is that the, we, we try to find a compact soil. And if it, we use some portions in the sidewalk, it's usually to have trees there. And most of the trees, some of the trees have roots that just go down the soil, but some trees that have roots that go in different direction. In one of these, it's, it's, uh, it's usual some, some place to find even the pavement, move it up because of the, the, the roots. If the cable uh, could be in this way of these roots, uh, the, 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 the root could change the, the, the way of the, the duct and cause bends and even co could affect the, the cable in way of uh, interrupt the, the fiber communication. Okay, it's a, it's a steel U shape. The idea is to have a tree like here, you have the cable here, you can put a U shape U, then the way to, to, to get another way to the, the, if not, you can move to another kind of trenchless uh, trench technique, uh, it's called micro trench. And the general idea is to reduce, and also this uh, technique is well described in a ITU recommendation, that's L49. Uh, in, in a different way, this kind, of, this kind of trench is put inside the asphalt layer, and the the mini trench is necessary to cut the asphalt layer and go to the compact soil. In this one, the idea is to put the, the trench and the cable inside the asphalt or concrete layer. Uh, it's this kind of uh, thing happen when people start to put cable near the final client then we move it out from the paved roads and sometimes and the sidewalk to go in other ways in the direction of uh, a group of house or uh, condoms or buildings. Then in this case, the micro trench is carried out by cutting a shallow groove in the asphalt. Then it's around seven centimeters without passing the asphalt layer. The group width may vary from 10 to 15 millimeter. It depends on the cable diameter. And this kind of cable needs to be more protected against crush and temperature. Uh, the protection of temperature is necessary because it's, uh, it's necessary to put 
the, the new asphalt and the cable will could be uh, in some high temperature in this case around 100 and 170 uh, degrees centigrade in this kind of cable it's better to have the the fibers uh, well protected and the main idea is to use a metallic cable uh, it's a, it's a protection inside the optical cable and the metallic tube is filled with some filling compound and after that uh, there is a polyethylene jacket then you have, we have the fiber we have the metallic tube inside this metallic tube we have we have the uh, the filling compound and protecting all this we have the polyethylene jacket and um, it's better to use this kind of um, cables and tubes in asphalt surface and then uh, always could be roads could be sidewalks and the idea is to get advantage of this protection the natural protection that this road or sidewalk has uh, of course, there are same advantage. One of the advantage is the speed of execution. Uh, also, the, the deployment cost, uh, considering the infrastructure necessary, is reduced. And also, the impact in environment in the traffic is reduced. But it's necessary to consider that a good plan of these routes uh, involves the consideration that that pavement, that asphalt, will not change and not be will not will be uh, repaired in deep way. Sometimes we have some reparation that only uh, change the surface. If this kind of road is intended to, to have some uh, deep repairment, uh, it will affect the cable. And we, we know that some roads, sometimes they just remove and put a new asphalt, then it will destroy the cable. Then the idea is to find uh, places where the, the road is not intended to be repaired in this deepest way. Uh, it's not so difficult because because one of the reason that this technique came was in to to put in place uh, where company is not allowed to to change a lot the the road there are some historical reason and or some uh, more uh, controlled place that it's not so easy to put the cable but after put the cable, the idea is not to change, and we have a long-term stability in this this kind of meaning. Uh, again, in all kind of trench of this kind, it's a, a detailed survey of the road, and the idea the idea is to identify the work that need to be done. Uh, and to have all the information before you start the cable installation and operation. And also to keep the fast implementation, it's necessary to prepare uh, all the points around the road that we need to, to have a special uh, position, special location of closures and, and sections and even at the use of another kind of infrastructure. Sometimes uh, we put this kind of mini trench and when we reach some place, a special position, we need to put uh, another structure like it. Uh, ducts and near some rail crossing and so. Then the idea is to have this done before 
just to keep the speed and to use the timing of the equipment, special equipment that I use to, to apply the cable. Uh, in some occasions, uh, I, I, I could say most of the location, it's necessary to investigate this, this soil, né? uh, using test and drilling. And the idea is to have an uh, idea of the continuation uh, all the way to, to have uh, the useful information to plan the route. Uh, the cable, it can be installed manually in the mini trench, just uh, laying the cable gradually uh, off the reel, and sometimes it's done using also a reel trawler. Um, it's necessary to protect in a special way this cable. Then the usual procedure is to put an expanded polyethylene strip uh, just above the cable, and after that, to put uh, another protection, normally a uh, rubber strip. Then this both will provide uh, protection, a kind of mechanical protection of the cable especially the expanded polyethylene strip, strip that is a soft material. And the rubber will provide some protection against temperature. Uh, why is necessary to do this? It's just because just, apply, just after put the cable and this kind of protection, the groove should be Close it with hot liquid bitumen. E, this material will create uh, an ex effective seal and to, to assure that the, the position of the cable will stay in the bottom of the groove. And the idea is to fill it uniformly, is to reconstitute the part of the pavement that was removed. And it's important also to isolate the cable structure in some way of the normal mechanical vibration that the road could uh, suffer. Um, it's normally to do after this operation uh, some kind of measure to assure that uh, all the pavement is uh, in in good continuity and avoid some uh, uh, edges, some steps, and some irregularities along the cable groove. Uh, it, what could happen if the the groove is overfilled with liquid bitumen? The practical reason of this is if we try to avoid some mechanical effort or vibration in the cable. But if we have uh, some difference between the normal surface and the, the point at where we put the groove, and we have, especially if we have a higher uh, level of bitumen just over the groove, uh, this part will receive more mechanical effort than I did to put uh, the same uh, level, the group is feeling, considering the other parts of the road, then uh, the tires could pass by and not to, to put effort in uh, some uh, specific part that could uh, transmit the vibration and mechanical effort for the cable. Uh, the, the use of this technique, the micro trench cable laying technique, is typical for attend customer uh, connection or what we call in general way distribution network. That's part of the network that uh, goes in the direction of the customer. Then could be 
the customer or some part of this network that distribute the, the telecom uh, and connect the, a, a group of clients to the existing network. And as it's important to do the analysis of documentation before to apply or during the planning of this kind of route, it's very important also to have all the information of the cable installed, because this information that will be used for the other uh, administration, for the administration or other companies, then the idea is to have a complete information about the route, about the, about the kind of installation, all the dimensions uh, involved, just to help the people that will do some work in this area to consider the existing cable, the new cable. As we are moving now to the next uh, kind of cable, I'd like to ask you if there is some detail or some information you'd like to discuss. There is no question, we can move to the next. And that refers to aerial cables. Uh, Uh, all measurements that uh, showing, I think uh, um, it's uh, less than one meter for all, the, all measurements of the trench and less than one meter. Whereas in the, our country, I think we are using one and above one cent one meter and above. So I think uh, my question is there is no impact of that measurement of uh, that is the that uh, trench which is above of one meter in the transmission. There is no impact in the transmission of uh, caused by that uh, thing. Okay, when, when you, yeah, this is a normal trench, a big trench, in one meter deep, that's fine. Yes, uh, most of the cables, the, the question is that uh, all the information we discussed here involve, involve it around maximum the 30 centimeters of trench. And when you go to the field and look at the cable that we usually install using trenches manually done big trenches yes it's around one meter deep uh, and the question is that if there is some consideration to be done about the transmission considering this kind of the of the uh, i don't think uh, we have to consider this if we use well protected cable uh, this kind of technique needs to use a uh, special, special cable and they are uh, with uh, less protection than we normally use in the cell of cable uh, between cities or inside a city. Most of these one meter cable are used in, in, in cables between cities, that's, that's the case. Yes. No, I, I don't think so, because the conventional cable, normally they have uh, protection, they have thick layers, thicker layers of polyethylene, and you have also protection that could be applied 
to the fiber. Normally, the fiber are inside the tube. Then we have uh, some kind of uh, uh, tension element. And after that, we have thicker layer of polyethylene. This kind of cable is usual to use without any problem uh, in 30 to 50 to 1 meter. The, the idea is to have and uh, this deepest uh, uh, trench is, is because most of the time we are doing some kind of work near roads and we have completely different situation f of the situation we found at the cities. Uh, even uh, some work done by farmers that trying to put fences and sometimes to trying to dig some uh, place to put dead animals. And if we use in this kind of situation, cables put in, in not so deep, we can find uh, this kind of problem. Then the point is that if we use a conventional cable, not a smaller dimensional cable, and this cable is well protected with this structure of loose fibers in tubes, and after that, a lot of protection material, there is no, no problem with uh, transmission in this kind of cable. And I think that there's a, uh, of course, uh, if we intend to use this, sh this special cable, we can have a problem. It's why in most of this application, the cable is inside a duct. Because anyway, you have the duct and the cable is, is put inside a duct. Yeah. When you do this, we first put the duct or put the duct with the cable inside. The two reasons. One is that it allowed to put the cable later in the duct or remove the cable and use the same infrastructure. The other one is that the, the cable will be in a very comfortable situation then the, this kind of cable could be a cable with uh, uh, less protection material, could be a cable uh, not as stronger that, than the cable used in, in buried cable. And just, just by curiosity, in this case, you put one meter depth, in, but you put just the cable, or you put uh, ducts and, and cable. It's just a cable? Yeah. No, I don't think that there's a problem if you use a conventional cable well protected. I think that the same question, it's, it's a, there's some worry about that. Other guys ask me also some related question. Any other question? Uh, to, in preparing this uh, information, I tried to, to get uh, part of the uh, content of the handbook, not, not everything, because if not, it's impossible to, to present here. And you have the handbook in hand, and also each chapter is related to one or more recommendations. And there are some uh, information that we, we can share here based on the experience consolidated in the handbooks and the recommendation, but also we can share general uh, information. I, 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 I'm here to try to help in both, both ways. Well, when we think in aerial cable, I don't know how frequent it is to use aerial cable in each country, but most of the country use aerial cable uh, inside the cities and sometimes to, to link one city to other. Uh, this, uh, there is a lot of installation method normal, normally used for this uh, kind of cable installation. And the cable could be all dielectric or could be 
cable that includes some metallic element and could be self-supporting, that is the cable contain all the mechanical elements necessary to be installed or lashed cables. That is, the cable is attached to a kind of uh, tension strand that normally is pre-installed. Um, the, the one point important to be to take in consideration, into consideration is the mechanical stress and strain experienced during the aerial cable and, and generally these, these, these things are less than those inducing during underground places. Uh, here we have a, a compromise. When we put the cable in underground, we need to pull the cable and we apply some efforts. And after that, the cable is normally uh, laying in a, a not stress or tension situation. When we apply an aerial cable, we apply less effort to install but the cables uh, suffers more stress and strain during his life. Uh, here we are more concerned about the effort that will be applied during installation. Um, in this kind of cable, if it's generally used, that if there is a road that mix uh, some underground cable, and when we reach some portion, it's necessary to put a aerial cable, it's consensus that we can use the underground cable, put it in this aerial portion, because the underground cable generally is more protected than the aerial cable. And it's not, it's possible to have part or most of the part in underground cable installation, and in some part we have the same cable going to some crossing or going to some, some part that was not uh, possible to put ducts, go the same cable in aerial installation. Uh, during the installation, there are some uh, methods to protect the cable that has been installed in terms of stress and strain. Uh, this, these types of systems it is, uh, could be uh, used uh, uh, just end pull system or to use also a distributed pull method. It depends, of course, the project of the cable. It's a good practice in installation of aerial cables to ensure that to ensure that the cable back tension is always uh, carefully controlled. It's almost the same situation we discussed before in underground. When we are pulling uh, an aerial cable, it's a good practice to control the tension. We, here we call the back tension. Uh, of course, the project of the cable it's, needs to be adapted to withstand lashing, if lashing to pretensional support while or existing metallic cable is employed. The, this lashing wire tension uh, must also take in consideration and be carefully controlled. Uh, a great care must be exercised when handled cable in air root installation. Then it's necessary to define, to specify if the cable will be put in this condition. There is a general view of a, a typical installation. And we have the winching and guidance system that are the most important uh, elements in this kind of installation. Then we have here a drum, 
and we have some uh, guides. Um, some ways we have a movable pulley. Uh, in this case, the cable has been installed near a suspension wire. In this case, it shows a use of intermediate cable puller. Then could be just pulled by the puller, but in the end of the cable, or in some times it's necessary to put some intermediate cable puller. And the the idea is that the the way we do this kind of operation provide the protection from overload and overbending. Again, the idea is to protect again stress and to respect the limits of bending rate. And all the winches equipment and pull winches, intermediate winches and controlled cable fuel device must be considered these two uh, necessities, to the control of overweight, overload, and overbending. For long uh, length installation, where this kind of distributed uh, pole system are used, it's very important to have all the guiding equipments and put this equipment in the position where we have changes in direction to make this change, sharp changes in to, have, to avoid this kind of uh, combination between uh, the load applied to the cable and the bend the cable will suffer. In this, this way, the situation is the same we have in cables that is installed on ducts. Sometimes it's necessary to put long length, and there is some method to maximize the length we could store. Uh, when the swing method is used, uh, we have some accumulation of friction effects, and the idea to control this is the use of intermediate winches. Uh, another way is to use the moving reel method. That is, the cable is attached to the strand, and as the reel is moved along the, the cable. It was the situation shown here. We have the, the moving movable pulley, and then the cable is attached to the suspension wire. Uh, if we do this way, the, the limit of the, the length of the, the, the cable could be the capacity of the cable in the drum. Then we can use all the extension of available cable to put if we both of this consideration are obeyed. Another point to take into consideration is the joining length allowance. Uh, again, the same way we did with underground cable, it's necessary to put an extra length of the cable. Uh, in any position, we intend to have testing or joining. Um, because the cable will be uh, after his installation, it was necessary to do the splice and also to protect the sheet of the cable, install the sheet closer. And, and during the planning of this route, it's necessary to put these uh, elements in a convenient work position. It's usual to to choose where we need to realize the splices. And sometimes it's necessary to keep an extra length just to 
go to the soil to realize the displaced near the pole or the fixing position, but it's in a better condition to, to do this. Then uh, some people have special equipment that could allow the splice at the cable level, but most of the times this is done on the ground. Then it's necessary to have the extra length necessary to do the operation with good conditions. Another consideration to be done in case of these cables is aspect related to in-service. Then uh, this cable will be submitted of a lot of movements, all kinds of movements that can be produced by the cable weight or thermal change or icy load or wind dancing can produce strain and must be taken into consideration. But be taken into account because it's necessary to, to know about the life cycle of the cable, what could be uh, happen, what could happen in this uh, uh, location, and to prepare the cable in uh, all the possibilities, and most of the time considering the worst possibilities. Uh, if, you are, if we have a high strain, strain, then the wind or ice or snow loading is anticipated, or if we have long spans, is necessary to, to prevent uh, strains due to the sagging of the cable of the, 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 all the cable and the strain. Strands. Uh, cable dancing due to the wind, it could uh, cause f strain in the fiber, and sometimes it's necessary to put dumpers or spring to avoid this effect in the fiber. And if we do this, the the cable will be in a better uh, way to stand and to not to be affected by this fiber strength. Uh, another point important is that when we add uh, optical fiber to an existing suspension member, uh, uh, it's necessary to, to look carefully what will be the situation after this cable installation, because it's always uh, we need to always uh, li uh, use this strain limit as a reference. Then if we have some um, structure, when we, in we decide to put this optical fiber cable in this structure, it's necessary to consider all these effects, consider the, the set we will have after the cable installation. We are moving to another subject. I'd like to ask you if there is some point you'd like to, to discuss or detail. Yes, sir. Uh, in the 1.5.6, I want to know how we can calculate uh, the additive and the uh, extension before installation. I say, I want to know, in the 1.5.6, how can calculate uh, the additive and the extension should be uh, before installation? Okay. The, the idea is that if you, if you have um, a structure, you have some metallic and you have some elements and that will have some displacement relating to temperature change and the idea is, is that if you are just putting some cable in a strand in one 
single structure. And we normally calculate all this uh, stress and load necessary to put that cable. And if we are adding another cable in a set of different elements, it could be in a long extension or it could be used in specific points, it's necessary to look to this and to know what will be or what we think could be uh, changed in terms of the formation of elements in the strain that could be added to the cable. Then we need to consider dimension, we need to consider the coefficient, thermal coefficient of the, the elements to avoid sometimes to use different kind of metallic supporting elements and to think that you behave like the, the other one we know more. That's the idea. It's, it's I, I don't have the number. Is no, I don't, I don't. I don't have the specific number in mind. I think it depends uh, what you call the similar case. And sometimes we we can find this uh, looking to similar situations. And just a few times necessary to to do some theoretical calculation. But most of the time we used to to find some similar situation, the same material, the same span, and so, and to, to consider this. Any other point? The other kind of installation normally used at the buried cable, then it's kind of experience you. We have around the world that big number of, there's a big number of cable that is installed direct in the soil in this kind of method. the schematic view of the, the equipment used to do this. And uh, there's a lot of normal, what we call normal bird cable installation method that in general could be used in this direct bird burial of optical cable. This plugging could be direct, vibratory or winching. There's trenching, there's molding, there's a lot of method that are generally used. The same depth of cover as for metallic cable is usually adequate. Uh, then the idea is to use the experience already existing for metallic cable, but uh, of course the stability of the fiber inside the cable is different uh, in we respect of traffic capacity and other consideration of security he can indicate uh, a greater depth. In your case, you are mentioned around one meter. That's one, one kind of the decision we can do. Uh, just to, by, just by curiosity, in, in, in Brazil, we use normally around 70 centimeters and in some well controlled situation we can use fifty centimeters and sometimes we use around one meter, one meter and twenty centimeters. Depends on on the case. And most of the time it's necessary to to look specific point and sometimes uh, people use in some portion of the route we use uh, ducts just to avoid soil movements or s things like that. And then when this trench method is used, the backfilling in materials and practice and may require particular consideration. And so these strain limits are not reached during the operation. And we need to uh, take special care with the kind of 
material we put near the cable, if the cable is uh, direct bird, all the outer surface will be near, stones will be near, and other kind of things that could uh, affect the, the surface of the cable. And, and it, most of the time, to put more pure material, more clean material, let's say this way, near the cable. And when you are 10 centimeters or more uh, far from the cable, put the, the normal uh, soil with a kind of different stones, but not near the cable. Then we can have in this drawing, it's a figure 312. Uh, it's a machine. And here we have the driven cable dam, some guiding system, a driving guide. and Go, the cable goes to the plug, and here we have the cable put in a, in a trench. All these guys need to obey that bending limit, especially uh, if the cable is under tension. Then the same machine is applying here and putting the cable uh, in besides the, the trench we have here. Sure. For the, on the driving quality, uh, what should be the maximum bending angle for the cable? Because the edge, it seems to be like 90, 90 degree. Uh, I don't know if really the bending is not uh, dangerous for damaging the cable. Thank you. The idea is always to have in mind that 12 times the outer diameter of the cable. Okay, and if and it's not the, the case, but if we have, sorry, if we have the cable under tension, it's better to use around 24 times 